estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Nesse caminho eu não desisto Estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Atrás não volto, não volto não Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Jesus é o guia onipotente Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Atrás não volto, não volto não And let's give Jesus a beautiful round of applause. Friends, today we are finishing the 12 weeks of fasting. We are starting the first service of this Sunday. And God has blessed us a lot. And I wanted to finish today studying, starting a study on Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3 and onwards. So that you will never forget, because if there was a factor that, let's say like this, was preponderant here in these meetings. It was the anointing that God gave to us, the understanding of His Word. And Isaiah says for us not to go back, no. He says the following, this is a commandment from God. Therefore, therefore with joy, Isaiah 12, 3, therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. All of the biblical revelations are wells of salvation. Any word that you hear from God regarding any subject, that God opens it up for you, testify of it to you, and you understand it, it is a well of salvation. Whatever God tells you, because He has made us and knows the exact word at the present time that will bring us the necessary strength, that authority, so that we can do his work. And we need to draw with joy water, the revelations from these wells of salvation. There is none of them that are sterile or that are a bad water source. On the contrary, at God's house, on his word, in everything related to the Spirit of God, there are only good things. But we need to have this understanding so that we can, with joy, but God, how will I do this if I'm going through a really serious problem and the situation does not sort itself out? Let's go to John chapter 16 so that we can understand how we will draw with joy this water from the wells of salvation. John 16, this is Jesus talking, one of his last instructions and he says the following in verse 22. The first part is not for this study today. Therefore, you now have sorrow. Now the part that I want to study with you. But I will see you again. And it will not be only one time. No, he will see us a number of times that are necessary. If we are going through a true tribulation, we should never rebel against God as if he was responsible for our problems. No. The ordeal comes because we turn away from the right path. We start to flinch. And so then the enemy comes with the temptation and God allows it to a certain point. He says that there will be no temptation bigger than our strengths. He does not allow it. He helps us in temptation in that ordeal. And when temptation comes, he gives us the escape. We should not be afraid. It could be a moral temptation, temptation regarding health, temptation in finances, in the marriage, whatever. God, I'm going through temptation and he will give us the escape. So, but I will see you again. When he comes, you rejoice in the meeting. You should not lose this joy. It is like you had to take a, a photo of it to always have it before your eyes, but it is a photo of your heart. You keep that moment to know how to act. Then you are going through an ordeal and you start to pray and it's not coming, but it will come. It will come. It will come. And then that joy comes back at the moment that you receive this joy. He says here, and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. It is yours. It is for you to, to use it to seek it, to be energized. 
and understand the word at the moment that you receive this joy. It is not God that will give it back to you. It is already yours. I will see you again and your heart will rejoice. And your joy, no one, no one will take from you. Neither God, because God is not evil, and let alone the devil that is evil, because he cannot take away from us what God has given to us. If we are going through problems, let's pray. Sometimes a minute is enough. Five is enough. Half an hour is enough. Two hours is still not enough. Five hours will be enough. I don't know how many hours, but let's keep praying. Keep praying until we enter into that moment that could have been the moment of your salvation or a moment that God visited you and you felt from now on, I can be victorious in everything. Whatever the problem is, it will be defeated through this joy because this joy that comes from the Lord is our strength. And he says the following, And in that day, what day? The day in which you have rejoiced. You will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father, in my name, he will give you. And this ask here is a claim. It is when you want to do something because most of the times we are not taking it seriously. Oh, God, help me. But we are not thinking about help. We say religious phrases that do more evil than good. We should always speak wisely. So, Lord God, you will help me because you have said in Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So, you are my God. I will not fear. You are already helping me. You are strengthening me and am upholding me. It is you who wins the battle. He helps you through the battle. He strengthens you, makes you stand firm, and then upholds you. At that moment, you can determine that things will happen. Coming back here to verse 23. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask, Claim sometimes also means determining. It is when to send evil, always send it away. Jesus came to the deaf man to heal him. Jesus went to him, placed his fingers on his ear and said, Ifata, open up. And the ears were open. He was teaching us how it worked. So in that situation, he determined for them to be open. If you are well with God, you are rejoicing. You don't even need to claim anymore, only determine. Just tell God because he said, I would not do anything without talking with my friend Abraham. Friend Abraham, don't do anything without telling me first. We are friends. I mean, Abraham, all of a sudden, it's just like that person that is gluttonous. I learned that you should put the food in your mouth, chew it well. You warn the stomach that meat is arriving, a fruit is arriving, something else is arriving. There are people that are not like this. They make a shake and gulp. So the stomach asks, what's this? All of a sudden. And here, this is meant to warn the stomach, folks. I don't like any sort of juices. I will tell you the truth. I like to eat the fruit because then I eat well. It does good for the gums. It does good for the digestive system. So this is good. And with God, it is also the same thing. Good Lord, I will take possession now. You have spoken to me. I will determine. Then you can consider it done. If you have determined, it is over. Or else the blessing will not happen. Verse 24 now. Until now, oh no, I am missing a part here. I didn't read the end of verse 23. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is what it says in the end of the verses here. He will give it, folks. It is the end of verse 23. The word here is very assertive. It is not maybe. It says he will. He will give you if you have joy and have claimed or determined it, you can have faith in the name of Jesus. It is not only mentioning it. No, it is with that assurance. So then what happens? He will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. But until now, when? Until you received this revelation. From this moment onwards, they can ask, but they didn't have it. There are revelations that I still do not have it. You do not have it, and maybe no one has it. But when they receive it, it will be opened for us. How many times we are needing something and we read the Bible, oh God, this is beautiful, I will claim this now. And you claim it and God does his work. Up until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive. Another assertive statement. It is not that maybe it will happen, no. If joy has come, 
you may ask, claim, determine that you will receive. And for what reason will you receive? That your joy may be full. Jump to verse 26 now. In that day, talking now again about that moment of joy, you will ask in my name. It means you will claim in my name. And I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you. There is a moment that he prays. If we are overdue, Jesus then needs to pray. But now no. If we have joy and he has visited us, it is over. You may ask that he will not pray to the Father because why? For the Father himself loves you. He wants us to have contact with the Father also besides him. Because you have loved me and believed that I came forth from God. This is what we need to be blessed. Amen, brothers. Let's watch now some beautiful testimonies, both from the Brazilian sponsors and from the people abroad. Show it, please. When a person is reached by Jesus, his power can be seen by those who are around. That is how salvation came to the house of this man. My friends, my name is Fortunato Hughes, and I'm from Lima, Peru. I want to tell you about my family. My sister was changing channels on TV when she found the Faith Show program, and her life changed. She was healed. God touched her through the Faith Show program. And nowadays, my house and I serve the Lord. I want to thank God with all my heart for the life of Dr. Suarez. Keep watching this program because God is doing miracles. Our ministry counts with an amazing team of sponsors. Becoming a sponsor changes everything for us. And now I saw that when I stopped being a sponsor, my life stopped. When I started sponsoring, things started to work out again. Today, I say that sponsorship goes first to be committed with the Lord Jesus with the house of God. Because everything else will be added in my life. The sponsor takes the word of God to all nations. And I thought this was beautiful. I said, with the little that I do, in the same way that I was watching, right? Other people will be able to watch also. As Dr. Suarez always says, you're only a sponsor if you felt the calling. When they asked who wanted to be a sponsor, I always felt the emotion. I realized God was with me because if he was touching me, it was because I had something to do in the house of the Lord. God touched my heart to become a sponsor and to sponsor my family. It was through the sponsorship of Faith Show that I reached all these blessings that I have in my life. I watched the Faith Show and Dr. Suarez called us to become sponsors. Then I said to my wife, I will become a sponsor. I will sponsor the work, take possession of the blessing. I will be healed in the back. What I spend on injections and medicine to be able to work, I will give to sponsorship. And I took the possession of the blessing, you know. I made a vow with God that I would not insist with them, that I would only sponsor them. In the sponsorship paper, there is my name, my son's name, the name of my two daughters and my son-in-laws. For the glory of God, he did something big. This daughter of mine who lives in Lisbon nowadays is firmly following with Jesus. I can only glorify the Lord for the things He does. Do not despise the beautiful commitment that you made with Jesus. Through Him, a blessed generation is formed. And let's applaud Jesus. Reminding everyone that this service is broadcasted on Thursday, this Friday, we need to pay Bun Channel. If you are a sponsor and have not made a deposit yet, please go to the bank because we will have our heads up always in the name of Jesus. God is blessing a lot. I know the story of this testimony from Lima. The sister, besides being healed, had a really tough financial life and today owns a currency brokerage. God is blessing them a lot. Glory to God for this. Maybe one day she will give her testimony here. Let's go now to Ephesians. Paul, writing inspired by the Holy Spirit, explains why we are receiving these revelations. And we are losing a lot for not believing and not going where God wants us to go. He says the following in verse uh, Ephesians 4.17 onwards. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. 
There are Christians that have never read this verse. They start to improve and become futile. My brother, the more we get close to God, less of the flesh and much less of sin we will have. So when the person is vain, feels like the best because he has an appearance that everyone likes, a physique, has a beautiful face or is prospering, this is all vanity. God can give you much more than what you have, but always be humble and give credit to Him for what He has been giving to you. The Gentiles, and many of us are imitating them, are the ones that have those things. They think that they are really important. This is all vanity regarding the way they think, their thoughts. Why does this happen? Because they are, verse 18, having their understanding darkened. Their understanding only has darkness. It is all closed. They don't have God's light, but we do have God's light. We should not want to appear, talk well about ourselves. No, we need to be people that are always in spirit. And if we are going to testify, we will only speak the truth without offending other people. And then we will please God. Whatever it is that you have, Give credit to God, but you, fellow, you are the one. No, this one is Jesus. I am just like you, just like anyone else. And anyone with Jesus is victorious. And we should not want, unless we feel that the person should accept Jesus right away, because there are some people that take a long time to make a decision. We go planting the seed, letting God grow and tell us when it is time to harvest. Having their understanding darkened. And what else are they? being alienated from the life of God. There is no way the person that has not accepted Jesus can be a wonderful person, humanly speaking, but he is alienated from the life of God. This person does not understand we should be patient for him. We are even silly that are following this thing called faith. It is not a thing called faith. No, we are doing the right thing. That is Jesus in our lives. They do not understand this, so they are alienated from the life of God. And we aren't, but we need to be smart people that sometimes it is the spouse, sometimes it is the father, the mother, all of them, to be able to seek God's presence. My mother was so against the gospel that she did not like even to hear about blessings in um, the evangelical church. She didn't like it, but I accepted Jesus when I was six. I went to church. I started to pray, started to pray. When I lived in Rio, I went for an annual trip to visit her, spend some days with her there, and I made use of it because she stayed really happy. Ah, mother, I want to tell you something to you. This is beautiful. One day I was at a church and this, that happened and so did this. <laughs> but she was a mother and wanted to be close to the sun. So I started to plant the seeds, mother. This person was healed. Ah, okay, okay, okay. But I will gain her, I will gain her. Persistence, my brother, with love, with care, because she was alienated from the life of God until the moment that she accepted Jesus. And afterwards, she said to me, I can't stand losing a holy communion. I eat the bread and drink the wine with a hunger, and God blesses me. Really good, mother, you are on the right path. So I baptized her on the waters. So having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God, be patient. And why? Because of the ignorance unfamiliarity that is in them because of the blindness of their heart that they are not responsible for. They are alienated because they don't understand. They are people that are not in the light. They are in ignorance. This word sometimes has a prerogative sense. You're ignorant. I mean, you are dumb. No, but it is the unfamiliarity with God's things that cause the blindness of their hearts. But deep down, they are human beings that have necessity are in need and that God wants to bless. So this is what happened in the past. We are different. We have been illuminated. We cannot, as he said here in verse 17, he said that you should no longer walk. We cannot walk as they do. There are no excuses. We have the light. We need to be people that show the way. Again, with all wisdom, with all patience, so that people won't get lost so that people can come before God and may be blessed. The ignorance that these people have will be destroyed through the love that we have by showing the word of God. Who, being past feeling, have 
given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. This is really important. Brothers, there are evangelical churches that allow everything. No, only natural relations after the marital act. No different from this. Dating has to be with holiness. Be holy, for I am holy. If you are not holy and Jesus comes back, you will remain here. There will not be one person with a stained vest that will go up with Jesus. We need to live as if he would come back half an hour from now. Today at night, I will prepare myself. And temptation comes, and sometimes the wrong desires come. No, no, no. With me, it is only natural relations. Don't listen to what other people say. The Gentiles, it is very clear here, they lost all feelings. And there, amazingly, as it seems, they lost it. But there are people who don't do what many Christians say that you can do. Look how serious this is. Who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, lack of a moral break, to work all uncleanliness with greediness, with hunger and thirst. And Paul says the following, But you have not so learned Christ. We learned from Jesus to live in a holy, pleasant way that is much more rewarding than filthiness, impurity that turns you into an instrument in the enemy's hands. Then afterwards, things don't work out for you. No, but I like the other place because I can do everything here. I'm not arguing with you regarding places. I glory to God, don't have this. I'm trying to open up your eyes because without holiness, says the Bible, no one will see the Lord. We will not see him on the day that he will come to get the church and he will not see him operating on a daily basis. Then, if you get sick tomorrow, something bad happens, a bad thing, and you cry out, cry out, but God cannot do it because it is written in Isaiah chapter 59. It is very clear here. God did not write this for the lost ones. No, this was written for us. Isaiah 59 starts like this. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened. Is it shortened? No, it is not. It is extended, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy with problems that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face, the face of God, from you so that he will not hear. Brothers, we need to have as an aim to get nearer to God every day. And only we know what is tempting us. There is no use to say it to another because you do not know it. You cannot enter into his soul, but he knows, and there some can refuse it. No, I don't believe in this. There's nothing you can do unless intercede. Because without holiness, no one can see the Lord. Our sins, but your iniquities, have separated you from your God and your sins, failed acts that we do that are against the Bible, have hidden his face from you, none of the others. But in relation to who is in sin, his face is hidden. For what reason? To not listen to the prayer. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. No one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. We have to plead, God. The truth is the truth that lies are lies. And I want to know and I want the truth in my life. They trust in empty words. No, do not trust it because it is fake and speaks lies. Anything that is spoken that is not in the Word of God is a lie. It doesn't matter who is the person that created the phrase or thought or that authorized something. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. Then it goes on talking almost the same things that is not today's study. Now, bow your head and close your eyes, Father. Today, we are finishing the 12 weeks 
that went by so quickly, O God, in which we had here great teachings. And I thank you for this because you have truly visited us. And in this heavenly visitation, we learned to serve you. We learned to do your will. And God, now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I tie up all evil that has continued until today in these lives. And I determine evil to release them now. These people are before your presence. And I am telling now to the spirit of mistake, to the spirit of suffering, of anguish, sadness, of wrongdoings that are found operating in these lives. Leave, go away, and now I am commanding you. Disease, the moment has come for you to leave. It does not matter where you are, from the top of the head to the sole of the feet. Go away. Leave the flesh. Leave the blood, the bones, the nerves, the skin, the organs from any part that you are now. You are rebuked in the name of Jesus Christ. And it is also rebuked the marital problems that do not allow these people to have peace. They lack wisdom from one or the other part. But Father, it is rebuked now. Whatever you have united, no one can separate. And I forbid the devil to continue acting and you will have to leave. I also pray for material prosperity. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know the dreams of these people and I unite my faith with their faith now and I break all evil opposition in the name of Jesus Christ, I determine doors to be opened, that these people may become operators of divine grace, prosperous people, victorious people. I rebuke all evil that persecutes these lives, people that are doing witchcraft, idolatrous, sorcery, black magic, anywhere, working against these people asking for the evil spiritual forces that go against us because the good ones we don't ask them father we ask for you and you send them asking evil to touch destroy undo harm father all evil is tied up now it cannot remain anymore and as a minister of the divine word I rebuke, I reprove, I expel it, and I say, may there be peace, may there be solution in these homes, in these families. Demon that took the son or daughter from the house, from the communion that these people have with God, to make this person and also his descendants unhappy. You are tied up now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless the people determine healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. And you say, Amen. Glory to God. Let me tell you. Now, let me remind the people from the north and afterwards the northeast. It is the northeast, but also in the, in the Amazon area. I don't know very well. San Luis. Yes, I know that is in the Amazon region. It looks like there's a different thing included in there. San Luis do Maranhão. And if it is legal, it's all right. <laughs> San Luis, I will be there Monday, the 3rd of September at 7 in the evening at Maria Aragon Square. I will be in Imperatriz at 7 p.m. on Wednesday at Beta Rio Acoustic Shell. On Thursday, I will be in Recife at Cruz Cabug Street, 65 at 11 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon, and 7 in the evening. On Thursday, the 6th, I will be in Maceió at 2 and 7 p.m. and two meetings in Maceió in Fernandes Lima Street at 733. And at 3.30 p.m. the following day, September 7th, in Salvador in Cairo Square in front of La Cerda Elevator there in the northeast when there was a big crisis of chikungunya and also of the Zika virus. I invited people to go, and in Alagoas, there were two meetings, and I will never forget the line of the people that had some consequence from these two diseases, thanks to God that it didn't go to other parts of Brazil, 
It was really sad. People, they get totally impaired. They don't walk properly, do not speak well. They do not breathe well. And the doctor even said to me, there is one of them that goes up and up and up until the person stops breathing. And God healed almost everyone. You know, we cried of joy by seeing it. And I will go there. If you have problems, do go that God will bless in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And on Saturday, I will be here with you. And on Sunday, wow, you preach a lot. Me? No, no, who preached a lot was Jesus. <laughs> I'm still very lazy. I need to preach more. There was a fact that I said here in the program. It is John chapter 8. Look, I get impressed with the examples that Jesus gave, and sometimes we don't get it. The Pharisees were discussing with Jesus, and things got serious. And Jesus was doing his work the whole day. And those people there, silly people only saying silly stuff. Then it finished. It is written like this. Look, in verse, I will read 8, 1, but get the former verse, uh, 7, 5, 3, the last one. And everyone went to his own house. So Peter went to his own house. John went, the Pharisees went, and I don't know who else. And Jesus also went. No, Jesus didn't go home. What did Jesus do? After spending the whole day, everyone was tired. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. He went to spend the night with God praying, folks. But Jesus, you give us some tough examples. Then he arrived around midday to do his work. No. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple. He spent the whole night in God's presence and then came back to the temple. And all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. He was seeking for God's teachings to teach people. Look, if we do this, we will be truly blessed. Glory to God. And let's go to the real life drama, shall we? the university in 2001. I couldn't pay for the college tuition, right? So I had to quit. I had to stop my studies. A dream that I had of graduating, but I couldn't due to financial reasons. I was far away from the ways of the Lord. It was a very hard time in my life. Everything was going wrong in all areas of my life. It was the church that we saw on TV, Dr. Suarez preaching and that, that woke us up, you know. Since I already had an evangelical experience in the past, I understood that I had to come back to Jesus. I started to learn from the Word of God. The, Dr. Suarez taught me that we had a position, a position in Christ, you know. At that time, I was doing a course to be able to apply for a scholarship for the university. It was then that I met my husband. When I met her, I said, look, I'm going to a meeting. Uh, I didn't want to say church, so we wouldn't... Uh, uh, I, I don't know, I was shy about it, right? But I thought like this also, well, if she doesn't want to come to church with me, I'll break up because I want to stand firm in Jesus. So I called her and said, let's go to the, to, to the faith show. I came by train to St. Jean Avenue on a Friday to watch the service and on that day I had an encounter with God. From the moment onwards I decided that I wanted to serve this God. It was in 2015 that I met Jesus. And I was paying attention to see her reaction and suddenly she was crying, she was moved, surrendering herself to Jesus. It was beautiful because it was something so natural. In March of 2006 I was baptized and it was from there onwards that God started to bless me and change my story. I remember that at that time I was about to do a test with more than 2,000 students for a single scholarship. At that time, Juliana participated in a church campaign. They distributed in this campaign a hammer representing God's justice. He said, look, use this hammer where you want justice. I took the hammer, took it out of my bag and hit the test. The students beside me looked at me and thought that I was crazy, maybe. But I determined that the scholarship would be mine. When they called my name and said that the scholarship was mine, I jumped off the chair full of joy and there, one more time, I could see the work of God, the difference between who serves and who does not serve God. And it was a blessing. I'm graduated in law school. As soon as I graduated, in the year of 2009, we started to prepare things for our wedding. And I always dreamed about getting married in the countryside, but I didn't want to give up the elegance. Everything was given to us. After a year of marriage, we're still receiving gifts. We lived in a small rented house. It was a very simple place. Right after, we started to sponsor on behalf of our financial life. And it was when I started to work with my husband. They began to work as real estate brokers. Those were difficult years in the financial market for the world, right? 
But got honored does greatly. There we got awards, travels, cruises. We got so many things. And in 2017, one more accomplishment. Our apartment came because of a purpose in which we determined that we would give a double tight because we wanted our house. We sold houses to people, but we didn't have our own yet. And it was when we decided, in the hardest year of the real estate market, to set a purpose of giving back to God, the double, you know. So we did it. In five months, we had our apartment. God was extremely faithful to us. Today we have our own house, we have a car that is already paid. We are living the Word of God in every sense. In our marriage, it's blessed, happy and complete. And also our financial life, our family life, everything we want we have been achieving. Thanks be to God. Today I am a transformed person inside and outside. God honored me greatly. Yes, with Jesus there is only happiness, folks. How many people, brothers, God is touching to be a sponsor, to help missions? We can't stop if the crisis is serious here. There it is worth. There are demons acting everywhere there. People don't have a place to go to listen to the Word of God, to read the Bible. It is hard, but we are there feeding millions of people. Don't think twice. Did God talk to you? The workers will pass around now. Don't say I don't have conditions. I do. Be always positive in what God tells you. You can register yourself. Now, if he didn't say or touch you, then don't take this paper and give me this part. And this Friday is the consecration day. I will spend the day praying for you, sponsor. What remains in your hand, and it is for you to go to the bank and make a deposit in the name of the Lord Jesus. This part, you don't have to write anything on it. When you write your information here, if it is possible, write down the number of your tax code because the government now by October will only allow financial transactions to happen with the tax code. They say it is because of those wrong things they did and they keep doing or, or they stopped. Uh, I don't know. But we have a commitment with this, folks, in this next election. Pray to God so that he can guide you. Imagine if everyone did this in the country. Of course, there's a lot of good people. But there are many that are not good to receive our vote, you know. So pray to God that he will guide you. And let's pray for our country to be different, better country in the name of Christ. We are heading to be the majority. Why can't we ask God to bless all the rest so that everybody can be the majority also with Jesus? And God will do this. I only need this part in the name of Christ. If you are at home, call our helpline 270219115676. Write this number down, brothers. 27021911567. Now let's talk with Sister Eliana there in the gray store. No, here, here she is. How, How are, are you, Sister Dr. Eliana? Faris. What do all you have for you. us? Representing all the good things they have in the gray store, I brought Paul's trajectory. We will learn from his conversion all the way to his missionary journeys. Are people searching for this book there, Sister yes, Eliana? Yes, they are, Dr. Suarez. By the way, the part inside is very beautiful. There are pictures where Paul walked and the studies as well. All right, you have more things there for you, with you, right? I have oh, many things here, many good things. Uh -huh. We have the book, Voice of a Prophet, Who Speaks for God. We have 11 books of this author in the Grace Store, but this one mm -hmm. is a new release. People can't miss it because it will sell out very fast. Spring Blessings of 2018 starts on September Amen. 22. Glory to God. I, I have some friends that I give some books, and sometimes they send me the phrase of the day. Today, God used you to say this. Then I know that they are reading the book and God is blessing. There are messages that we write for the seasons. This one is for the spring that starts in September 22nd until December. It is for you to have a message for every day. And glory to God for this great storage just around the corner. I'm sure you will be blessed by going there. You can ac access our website at ongracesouthafrica.com. And you can also write us a message to WhatsApp that they will answer you. The WhatsApp number is... 27079496907. You can also call our helpline. The number in Cape Town is 27021911567627021915676. 27021911567. Let's now go to the first question, shall we? Doctor, how can I recognize God's will in my projects? 
Well, a project that is yours will never may be recognized. But if it comes from God, you may recognize. No, this project comes from God. And it is through the word. Place it before God in prayer and you will feel it that it is yours and from God. I think that you should do what comes from God because he certainly knows the best for our lives. Second question, please. Dr. Suarez, what does it mean to be accountable in the Judgment Day? Wow, this is serious. <laughs> the Bible says that the books will be open. Which book? The 66. And we will be judged by what is written here. So everyone, be sure to read the Bible, to always go to the service to learn and look, flee from sin, because who? Who lives in sin will suffer a lot, will go to eternal fire for the rest of eternity, suffer for all eternity. And with Jesus, you will go to eternity rejoicing with him. Let's now open up our hearts, shall we? Dr. Suarez, for some time now, I have been going through problems at my house because I have big quarrels with my mother. I love her, and because of this, I have entered in a firm purpose with God for our relationship. However, it looks like the more I pray, the more we quarrel. She does not have the same faith as I, and because of this reason, she thinks completely different from me. I need to stop this. How should I position myself spiritually? Stop with this thing. You don't need to do anything. You should only pray to God. I told you that my mom, I never argued with my parents. I don't know how a son can argue with a parent. Sometimes I didn't agree, but they were my parents. I kept quiet, you see. And I I used to be an active child. My father sometimes gave me some tough corrections. <laughs> Once, it, it wasn't meanness, but I, I didn't warn people at home. Uh, a man who was married with my aunt. There were two sisters. Actually, they were in more than two, right? He went to put fire in the pasture, and I went to help him. And my father thought that I had disappeared. He got mad. I was looking there, and people were complimenting me because when the fire passed to the pasture of the neighbor, even with the barrier, we had to put out the fire. So I went up and ran down to, to put out the fire. When I got home, my father hit me in a way that I remember it until today. But I never cursed, never argued. We have to respect their parents. They want the best for their children. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Father. He forgives. What can he do? You are wrong. You worry. You need to be patient with your mother. You will never win anything while you fight against her faith. If she has the wrong faith, <laughs> show her God's power that she will leave everything to have the power of God with her. But with this confrontation, who will lose it at the end will be the kingdom of God. Let's go now to the Grace TV moment, shall we? Grace TV was installed in my house on May 1st, 2008, so it was 10 years ago. It has a great programming, a very clean schedule, passed on the morality filter of ethics. In the old days, 10 years ago, there were the silver and gold packages. I started with the silver and then upgraded to gold. Nowadays, we have many packages for a very affordable fee. After I broke my ankle, I used to walk limping. Within three months, I left the cane, I left the crunch, you know. In short, it's wonderful. I have already received several, several blessings, uncountable ones after I installed Grace TV in my house. What a nice lady. I will hire her to make the Grace TV propaganda. But it is true, folks. Tell me another cable TV station that has someone telling of what happened to them. Look, I've been healed. I've been blessed. Who does not have it is missing it. Get the brochure and take it home. Pray about it. If you feel from God that you should register, call us and ask for all the information. If you are at home, call our helpline now, 27021-911-5676. 27021-911-5676. Our website is ongracesouthafrica.com or you can write a message to our WhatsApp number and it is 27079-496937. And contact us. This will change your life. It's not like the secular TV that does only what the enemy wants. We are trying, fighting to do what God wants. 
But there are not only evangelical channels. No, folks, we have 60 channels. We have the same ones that they have, but they charge even five times more. We only don't have the pornographic and immoral and violent channels. And we have the evangelical channels that they don't have. Choose your package, the one that fits you better. And may God bless you in the name of Jesus. Now, let's stand up to pray. The time has come, right? Now, let's connect to God, folks. Today, this is the last prayer, and I want you. It's not the last prayer of our lives, but of the fasting campaign. <laughs> I think we still have a lot of salt to eat here. We will still see many winters and summers pass by. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, first I pray for those who are at home. I unite my faith with the faith of these people and I say to the evil that is in them, in the name of Jesus, I order to you, evil, leave these lives to never more come back in the name of Jesus Christ.